in order to calibrate the sandbox, what one has to do is capture a bunch of calibration tie points between the projector um, and the camera. And the way that it works is you run the calibration program, calibrate projectors, which will uh, project down a whole bunch of uh, vertical and horizontal lines and at which intersection you have to place the calibration target, which is just uh, a, a disk. In this case, I took a CD and I glued a paper disk to it and there's a, there's a marker exactly for the uh, precise center of the disk. That's important because you have to line up the center of the disk with the, uh, with the projector. And those tie points have to be calculated not just laterally, there's going to be by default 12 of them, but you also want to capture them at different heights, ideally above and below the sand surface, because the range of heights that you collect uh, will, will limit the heights at which the sandbox works later. Uh, so what I did here is I dug a bunch of holes into the sandbox and I picked up a couple of hills, and I'm going to be doing one calibration run where I collect low tie points, where I essentially uh, place the DVD or place the CD low, and then I'm going to do a second round of 12 points where I collect higher tie points using a big spacer. Now, when you collect points, you can't just plonk the DVD or the disc directly onto the sand. It has to be a little bit above it so that the Kinect can distinguish it from the background. Uh, and so I'm using a little roll of tape here as a spacer, very ad hoc. Um, so the idea is that you just go in there, you place the, the spacer, put the DVD on there, uh, line it up, and then you check that the Kinect actually sees your, sees your target. And it does, uh, in real time, it shows you this green box uh, is the bounding box of local blobs uh, that are above the surface. Um, so you see that as well, you might not see it in the camera view, but there's a little green box in that uh, hole over there, which corresponds to the CD. So you want to always make sure that there's one nice straight target. Uh, the target shows up over there and not here because there is no calibration yet. So the projector doesn't know what the camera sees. So then once you have, uh, once you're ready to collect tie points, what you need to do is uh, you need to make a, a tie point collection tool, which in this case I'm just going to bind to uh, the one key on the keyboard. Uh, that's okay, just bring in the mouse like this, uh, press one, press and hold, brings up the tool selection menu from the menu, actually bring, let me bring it up over here, select the capture tool, let go of the key. So now if you press the one key, the system is going to collect data for two seconds, uh, and then that's going to be the first tie point. I press the key, and then it's going to move on to the next tie point. And so we just keep doing this uh, 12 times for the first round. Again, 12 is just the default, but it seems to be a reasonable uh, number. And it doesn't really take very long. So I'm going to take the next tie point, press the key. Uh, you notice there was a very nice uh, capture place the marker over here, get another one right here, all right, go to the next, got to be a little bit careful while doing this to not disturb the sand surface too much, because right now the program doesn't have a way uh, to recapture the background between taking tie points. Um, that's actually a very simple addition I'm going to do uh, to give you the ability, if you disturb the surface because you notice you can't get good tie points that you can tell the program at runtime to recapture the background. Currently, it only does it when you start up the program. That's why there's a couple of seconds delay between running the command and the grid showing up for the first time. And being able to do it intermediately would be a very useful thing, but for some reason that didn't occur to me until just now. Uh, so we are stuck with it until the next release which, you know, is going to be coming out, who knows when, hopefully not very long in the future. So I'm just going to go through here very quickly, probably going to cut most of this out anyway. Um, all right, let me take this guy. All right, press one again. We are two thirds done. Well, actually we are one third done because I want to capture another 12 tie points. Get this guy. Oh, one thing I should mention that you should be careful about uh, is to keep the DVD or the disc uh, as horizontal with respect to the connect as possible. Uh, it, it, in principle, but well, in theory, it doesn't matter if it's at an angle. But due to the peculiarities of how the connect works, uh, you're going to get better tie point measurements if you keep the target nice and horizontal, assum assuming that your connect looks down vertically. Okay, 
All right, last tie point for the first for the first twelve. Okay, let me line this up. So this here is a pretty deep hole, so I need to make sure that the connect now sees a bit of noise here, which is not ideal, um, but it still sees a pretty big box. So I think that uh, this is going to be okay. So now, after I've done with the first 12 points, the program already uh, is essentially done at this point. It did the calculation just now of the calibration matrices. It prints some statistics info and the matrices on the uh, command line, which you can't see right now. Um, so it's essentially I'm done. I could just shut down the program and be on my way. But since I do want to capture more points, I'm going to get my I'm going to replace the uh, the tape spacer with the other spacer that I have, uh, which is this guy, uh, and going to do 12 more. Again, this is completely an arbitrary decision. I just figured out that doing it uh, is really uh, gives a better quality gives a better quality fit. So here we go. Do another one. Oops. So when you have the the disc above the surface, you have to sort of you know finagle it a little bit. But you have to always have to make sure that the the intersection of those two lines from the projector goes right through the center of the disc, which is actually really quite easy to line up. Okay. There's one more. And this guy, let's see, place it here. Now you want to be uh, as precise as possible doing that because the, the goodness of the calibration that you collect, okay, now here we have a problem due to the parallax in the projector. I can't really put the marker here, so I need to go back to a low marker. It doesn't matter if you capture a couple of measurement points twice, the problem will just you know, throw them out as redundant. But since I can't place the, the long spacer here, I'm just going to do a low tie point. There's going to be so many tie points that it's not going to matter in the least. So let me just quickly do another one. Okay. Now we're really almost done. One more over here. I'm in the river lab today, so there are a few people actually working here besides me, walking through the frame. Just ignore that. All right, another one here. There we go. Okay, getting there. Okay, two more. All right, last calibration point. Almost done. I gotta really shove this guy in here due to parallax. Okay. And we're finished. So now I just have to shut down the program. Um, and we're going to run the sandbox immediately after to see if the calibration we collected um, is, uh, is any good. Just going to clean up a little bit. Sand sticks to everything. Let me put away my calibration gadgets. OK. So I'm going to shut down this program. At this point, we have the matrices that we needed. They have been saved out. They've been written to the console, but also saved out to the configuration file that's later on read by the, sand oh, by the sandbox software. Uh, let me just check if it really did that. Uh, yes, indeed, it did. OK, so now I'm going to run the sandbox. And ideally, uh, wonderful. What we're seeing is a very nice, a very nice calibration indeed um, between between the projector and the connect. So if I make a, a tiny little hole right here, there it goes. Wow, that is a spectacular calibration. So 
that's about what you should be aiming for. That if you make a tiny little scratch, um, that the virtual surface lines up with a scratch uh, more or less up to a millimeter or so. Uh, great, so that's how it works. Uh, thank you for watching, and good luck with calibrating your own sandboxes. I will talk to you guys later.